Oh man, I've got so much stitching to do. What am I gonna do? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so. Velox Sutura. Quick stitching. Okay, great. Two needles. One strand of thread. Blood, sweat, and tears. Ow! <laughs> okay. One cheetah whisker. Where the? Where am I gonna find a cheetah whisker? I mean, okay. Yeah, they're fast. Okay. I mean, I guess I could find like a cat whisker or something. That should work. Stitching, here we come. Hi, my name is Ted with Legacy Brand Leather. In this video, I'm going to be crafting a leather potions book. Now this is my first time crafting a book like this. I've never actually done anything that included stitching in pages. So I'm nowhere near an expert on making books or anything like that. I just really wanted to try this. And if you give it a shot, please let me know how you did. Anyways, let's get to it. Alright, we're going to start by making some signatures. Book signatures essentially are bundles of raw pages that you can assemble together for your finished book. I'm going to be using some regular 8.5 by 11 inch printer paper since I don't have anything fancy right now. And I'm doing 5 pages per signature and 5 signatures total. So 50 pages total, but add as much as you'd like. I'm folding the pages in half and creasing with the bone folder for a nice crisp edge. Once all those are done, I marked out on a larger sheet of paper a rough distance from what will be the edge of the cover to the pages. Then I'm just taping together another page of the template so I have enough to work with. Since I've got the distance I like from the top and bottom edge, I'm cutting off the excess. Now I'm marking what will be the edge of the book spine, which is where the back of the signatures appear to sit. But I have to compensate a bit for the leather to make that crease, which will make sense in a second. So for my book, I wanted to space the signatures apart every quarter inch, with a 1 8 inch distance between the outside signatures and the edge of the book spine. That means a total distance of one and a quarter inch from spine mark to spine mark. This could have been smaller, but since this was my first time doing it, I wanted to err on the side of giving myself more room just in case. Now I'm marking the edge of the other signature at the corners from where the signature sits against the opposite spine mark I've just made. Ignore the other marks there. I wanted to start the holes three quarter inch from the top and bottom, and then another hole one inch down or in from that. Again, I'm going to be spacing my signatures one quarter inch apart. This will make more sense in a bit. Then I'm hammering the holes through the template. Now that I've got my holes all hammered through, I'm lining up the first signature on where the mark it should sit. And then using a pen to mark the stitching holes on the top and bottom. Then I folded the signatures flat and hammered the marked holes. I'm showing that again in case you need to see it. Repeat the process for all your signatures. For the leather book cover, I'm using Wicket & Craig Buck Brown Harness Leather, 6-7 to seven ounces thick. Then I cut out my rough template shape. I then traced it and made sure to mark all the holes for the spine.
Now it's time to cut it out and hammer the holes through. I used the template to mark the spine edges here, and then used a pen to mark from top to bottom. Here I'm using a V-gouge tool to cut out a groove to make the crease for the spine. I'll be the first to admit, I need more practice with the V-gouge tool. It's a bit rough, but the whole book in my mind is supposed to look rough around the edges and worn. Give yourself some practice on it before heading to your book cover. I'm using an edge beveler to round the top and bottom edges a bit before burnishing. Before spending the time burnishing though, I wanted to add my stamps and lettering. I found this book printing stamp of a skull at a stall on Portobello Road in London a few years back I thought it would be great for this book. And since this will essentially be my cocktail recipes book, I wanted to emboss potions on it. I repeated the potion stamp for the spine of the book too. Then it's time to burnish. I'm using Tokenol Clear Edge Finish. You can easily burnish with the wood slicker by hand, but I'm going to speed up the process with my Coco Bola wood attachment on my rotary Dremel tool. I gave it a rough sanding of 220 grit and then applied some brown edge dye. After drying, I added some more tokenol and burnish again. I then added some beeswax to protect and burnished again. You don't need to do this next part, but if you do, Please have a fire extinguisher nearby, and adult supervision if you're underage. Please be safe. I really wanted to give the pages of my book some sort of character. If I had more time, I would have used tea or coffee and stained the pages. But instead, I'm going to be burning the paper edges. I passed the bundle of pages across the open flame and quickly patted them out when they caught a bit. Just enough to add some extra character. For the stitching, I thought some Ecru colored wax polycord from Main Thread Company would work great with this leather. So I cut some thread and lined up the first signature. I threaded the needle through one of the holes and then through the corresponding hole in the signature. Then I stitched through the other hole and signature hole. Basically you're creating a small loop that is locked into the center of each signature. I pulled it tight and then stitched back through to lock the pages in. And then one more time stitching so the thread ends are on the inside. I pulled that snug and then just did a double knot so the pages wouldn't move and trimmed it short. Here I'm just showing it again in case you need to see it. Mm -hmm. 
And now, drink your Velox Sutura Quick Stitching Potion and stitch in the remaining 5 signatures. Now you could stop here, but I wanted to have something that would secure the book closed. I cut a 5 8 inch wide strip. Hammered a pointed tip end, and then just by eye, cut the other side of it that fit around the book. I then went through the same process of beveling, burnishing, dyeing, and then burnishing, and beeswax again. I punched holes in the securing tags and then placed them where I thought they would look best on the front. It ended up being an inch from the top and bottom. Then I just held it in place and marked the hole with an awl. Then I punched out the holes on the front and the back. I then added the top of the button snaps to one end of the securing tags. Then the bottom of the button snaps to the front of the book cover. And then some double cap rivets to secure the tags to the back of the cover. And that's it, but let's check out some B-roll. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to support my channel, head to patreon.com forward slash legacy brand leather where you can unlock member only benefits. I want to give a shout out to my first patrons, Mark D and Andrea Amador. Hopefully I'm saying that right. But thank you so much, I really appreciate your support and I can't wait to do more for this channel and for you. Head to my Instagram at legacy brand leather and give me a follow. I post product photos, process photos, and general rugged vibes. If you like this video, please hit that like button and please subscribe. That shows me that you want to see more videos and more content like this. Other than that, I'll see you next week with a new video. Stay safe out there.